What's up, fellas? In today's video, we're going to be talking about D'Angelo Russell, a player that, going back to his days on the Brooklyn Nets, I have had some opinions about, some opinions that not everybody has always agreed with, uh, and I feel like now is a good time to reiterate the opinion that I have about D'Lo, that he is one of the most overrated players in the entire league, and kind of explain why, because a lot of the things that I said two years ago are now becoming clear in his time in Minnesota. And that's what I wanna talk about in today's video. But quickly, before we get started, if you're new here, what's up? My name is Tucker. I upload NBA stuff on this channel twice a day, every single day. So if that type of consistency is something that you're looking for, this is a great place to be. You can also leave a like rating on the video as well if you're enjoying the content. Uh, it helps get it out to more people on YouTube and it's just, it doesn't take long. It helps me out a ton. And you can check me out at various socials at the bottom of the screen. There's a link tree down in the description below. With those things said, let's just go and jump right into it, right? D'Angelo Russell. So two years ago, D'Angelo Russell's on the Nets, uh, and I will give him this amount of credit. So the Nets didn't have a whole lot going on for them on the offensive end of the floor. There were some things. There was some Karis LeVert stuff. Joe Harris was starting to become a good shooter. There was some Spencer Dinwiddie stuff. But overall, it was pretty clear that uh, you know they were going to be struggling offensively a good amount of the time. And they bring in D'Lo in this trade a few years prior, and there's some flashes, but he never really puts it together. And then in that 2019 season... He becomes an all-star and he has great averages and he's you know one of the offensive focal points and has a really really good season and in that moment all of a sudden d'angelo russell became a max level player and people declared him a star people declared him one of the up-and-coming players on the perimeter in the league and i had a problem with it even then i made a video talking about free agents that i would stay away from and i put d'angelo russell eric bledsoe terry rogier and willie cauley stein on that list you tell me how that worked out and the reason at the time that I gave was D'Lo is a good but not great player, and I still stand by that. D'Lo is a good offensive player, right? He's not great, but you know he can score 20 points. He can put he put up you know five or six assists a game, and as long as everything is about D'Lo and about what he does on the perimeter, he's going to put up some nice numbers. But he thinks he's a little bit better than he is offensively, which leads to some some you know struggling and efficiency stuff. And that also means that he feels like he doesn't need to give any effort at all on the defensive end. And so that was my issue at the time was like, people want to pay this guy a max contract to play good, not great basketball on only one end of the floor. I just, I didn't stand by that opinion. And when he made the all-star team in 2019, it validated expectations that other people had for him, right? Here's what I mean. So D'Lo obviously is the second overall pick in the draft a few years prior, has some struggles in LA, but everybody feels like he still has some talent, right? And as soon as he starts to look like a good player in Brooklyn and makes an all-star team, that validates the expectation that people had for D'Lo coming into his career in the NBA, and all of a sudden he has met all those expectations when really that wasn't the case. And if you'd actually watched him a ton that year, he was, like I said, a good but not great player that doesn't give any effort on the defensive end of the floor. And in my opinion, that is not a max level player despite the age, despite the potential, despite all the other things that come with D'Lo. And if he was like the 25th pick in the draft that year and then you know had an all-star level season, I'm not sure people would have jumped on the bandwagon as quickly as they did for D'Lo. So here's my case as him as one of the most overrated players and probably the most overrated player in the entire league. People treat this guy like he is one of the top level young point guards in the league, and that is simply not the case. That position, whether it be point guard or just perimeter, you know, scorer, creator, ball handler guy, is so, so saturated and has so many incredibly talented players that we start to lump them together, and D'Lo just continues to get lumped together in a group in which he does not belong. And, you know, if, if, if you're a team like Minnesota, that wants D'Lo to be this guy. You want him to be this all-star level guy. Well, you're going to continue to feed him opportunities and everything kind of has to be about D'Lo for you to get not only your money's worth, but you know to get a ton of value out of him while he's on the floor. So everything has to be about him. He has to have the ball a ton. He has to be shooting the ball a ton. When in reality, you know, he's not good enough to necessarily, you know, need that many touches or necessitate having him you know shoot the ball and facilitate literally everything but to get any kind of value out of him you have to play him like that so it's this weird situation where not only is he being paid a ton but also the Timberwolves could have the worst record in the entire league this season they could not win a basketball game the rest of the year and still have like a 60% chance of giving up their pick to Golden State because they owe it top three protected to get D'Angelo Russell. And I understand that there were other benefits of that deal. Getting out of the Andrew Wiggins contract that Minnesota backed themselves into in the first place is one of those benefits. And Wiggins is actually playing pretty well with Golden State right now. But D'Lo, 
for a top three protected pick, given how bad Minnesota is, granted Cat hasn't played, there's other circumstances there in Minnesota, is just not a good trade. And people, and it seems like in the NBA and outside of the NBA, his fans continue to overvalue what D'Lo brings to the table. What he brings is good but not great offensive production from an efficiency standpoint and zero effort on the defensive end. And what that means to me as a player that does, does not help you win basketball games. I know that D'Lo was good in that season with Brooklyn. I watched it. He was a good player, and he is a good player. And I'm not saying that he's bad or that he doesn't need offensive opportunities. I'm just saying that he's overpaid and he's overrated. And people treat him like he's a star because he was a former number two overall pick and because you know he made an all-star team once. That all-star year was a really weird one because there were like three injury replacements and... Uh, D'Lo replaced Victor Oladipo on that All-Star game. Like, if everybody that was initially selected was healthy, D'Lo would not have been an All-Star. Um, was he a borderline All-Star caliber player that year? Yeah, kind of. But there were also plenty of games there in Brooklyn where they were better at the end of games without D'Lo out there, with Spencer Dinwiddie out there, because he was actually giving some level of effort defensively. So for me, D'Lo is going to have a nice career. Like, he's going to continue to be a good player. But at some point, we're going to have this moment, and we're going to realize, you know, this guy isn't who we thought he was. He wasn't you know, the, the number two overall pick in the draft. Like, he's fine, but he's not a franchise guy. He's not a franchise-altering player. And I know that there were other reasons for bringing in D'Lo, and you want to keep Cat happy and, and all these different things there in Minnesota, but uh, just D'Lo as a player, I'm not a fan of. I don't think that he is someone that needs to be mentioned in the same sentence as guys like Devin Booker. Like, th those guys are on completely different levels as shot creators and playmakers, in my opinion. And it's not all that close, uh, whether that be from an efficiency standpoint or playmaking or whatever the case may be. D'Lo's overrated. And you guys can let me know down in the comment section below who you think the most overrated player in the league is, but I will stand by this one. I got a ton of hate at the time for my D'Lo take because people were saying that, oh, how can you, you know, not like this guy? You're a Nets fan. He's actually doing really positive things for your group. And I will give him credit for, you know, turning around the offense of that group and making them seem a little bit more competent, which, you know, you could argue resulted in them getting KD and Kyrie, but you can go back and watch that video. Like I, I did not advocate for this guy to be a max level player. And I just, I, I think that he has continued to prove that in these next couple of seasons where he's a good, good, but great, not offensive, good, but not great offensive player. Uh, he's a guy that needs a lot of things to be about him in order to be fully effective. And I just don't think that that means that he is a max level guy. That's all. But with all those things said, as I said in the beginning, once again, my name is Tucker. If you guys missed any of my previous videos, you can check out the boxes on screen. You can also sub to the channel down below as well for uh, extra NBA content every single day. You can leave a like reading on the video and you can check me out at various socials at the bottom of the screen and that link tree down in the description below that I continue to mention. If you're looking for the second video of the day today, that will be about Bam Adebayo. It'll be up in a couple of hours talking about how he is legitimately one of the best bigs in the entire league and it is not all that close. With those things said, hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you all next time.